We, we basically focus on a couple of areas. We do office repositionings and we do some uh, residential redevelopments. We're doing a little bit of lending. Um, I think all of that sort of comes together in an interesting way in that um, to the point about the office market, um, you know, for several years, I think that ultra well located, you know, super stable, as you guys have heard me say it before, the Goldilocks principle assets are um, continuing to trade at very um, expensive levels. The things which sort of don't initially strike people as interesting are now becoming interesting. So sort of A offices and B locations that are well let. Um, and part of that's driven just by the fact that investors are starved for yield. Um, so as you saw earlier on the charts, the financing spread um, was pretty attractive in Germany. You can still get pretty attractive rates on office. So if you can capture, you can capture yield at pretty attractive levels. We don't do a lot of that. We do some of that. That's more for you know Alex's domain. Um, on on sort of repositioning strategies, we do like Berlin. Um, we started going into Berlin aggressively about a year and a, uh, two years ago actually, um, and so we've been riding a bit of that um, upward trend on pricing, and you know we're, we're seeing it. And and to the point about rents, I mean it is it is true in a lot of sub markets and districts. You know, rents have gone, um, have increased dramatically. And, and Berlin has had a pretty steady rental growth increase over the last um, 10 years, really. And in the last three, it's gotten, um, you've had, you know, in some cases, more than 5 to 6% rental growth in, in a lot of areas. So, so we sort of look across a number of different areas, but I think a lot of the, I, I would echo a lot of the comments uh, that have been made. And in terms of Berlin, that's mainly residential you've been looking at, or also? Yeah, well, we, we own some, we have owned, stabilized, sold offices in Berlin as well. Um, more in that sort of B sub-market area, but A quality buildings, and we were buying things that were left over from the overhang of the, the sort of the bubble period of going back to 2002. I mean, these bubbles, sort of these, these growth periods take a long time to work off. So I imagine we'll be buying stuff from you know the 2006, 2000 era in uh, five or six years. <laughs> right. um, uh, but, but we're selling to yield buyers, so groups that are wanting to capture that spread. Because right now, as you saw, you can finance in Germany. Um, all it takes is one bank to have a competition. I mean, you know, we do that all the time. You know, if you have two banks, it's wonderful because you get quite a lot of competition. Um, so you can actually finance reasonably well that product. The weighted average lease life is a factor, but that's just a you know function of the German market. But you know if you can sell you can sell at say a seven and you can finance that for below th at three, then you've got massive interest rate um, spread that you haven't seen you know you haven't seen it for well, I mean, I came in '03 to Germany, and you know, I, we didn't see it then. We saw maybe 300 basis points at certain points in time there. But, I mean, this is the biggest spread um, that we've seen, and this is sort of a little bit like Japan was um, back in, you know, sort of the 2002 to 2003 era. So it's it's pretty interesting if you had capital that was looking for very stable yields on a leveraged basis.